People, welcome back to another edition of Quality Over Quarantine. We are still on lockdown, but we still ain't knocked out. Right today, man, we got um a very a very special guest here. Yeah? And this is probably gonna be this is gonna be an interesting conversation because I know he's got a lot to talk about. You lot have been have been hitting me for time, asking me when I'm gonna get Carl Hines on. So it's, he's here, man. We got Carl. We got Carl Hines on, man. Mister Don Graham himself. What's saying, brother? What's going on? What's going on? You at, right, bro? I'm good, man. I'm good. How you How you doing this, in this whole this whole lockdown situation, man? Wait, I know you're a producer, so most producers know it ain't nothing new. Spend most of our time in the studio and whatnot. Yeah. So, I mean, my studio's in my house as well, so it's business as usual for me. Same. I guess the only difference is, obviously, you know what I mean, I've got my daughter with me a lot more and whatever, so. Yeah, seeing, seeing. I, I found, actually, like, um, I know it's 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 different, because obviously, like, obviously you're, you're around your kids a lot anyway, but yeah. now, because it's like, there's nowhere else to go, you're around them 24-7, it's actually, it's actually like a, a blessing in a way. So, and and a lot of people that I've spoken to have been like, yeah, I could do this standing on my head. Like, it's it's all good. I do this anyway. Like, I'm a, me. I'm I'm a homebody. I don't, I hardly ever leave the house anyway. So to me, it's like, see, it's normal. But every now and then, I get this little twinge. I'm like, I just want to go for a drive, and it's like, ah, long. But from but that, it is how you, how you doing with the whole um tutoring thing and the whole coming up with things to teach them and that that caught me out a little piece still. Yeah, well, the thing is, obviously, the schools are um, they're dropping them like their um, their work. So every day, a minute. She, mm. she she's done with it, man. She's over it. But um, her mum ain't <laughs> letting her foot off her neck in it. So mm. the work the work ain't stopping. She's like, yeah, school's done, but your education ain't done. So you need to get to work. Simple. So they've been they've been doing a, they've yeah, been like, doing nine to fives, man. They've been doing nine to five. Yeah, so. I feel you. Yeah, it's well, straight. You know what I was thinking, man? It's been a little while since we've actually spoke, man. It's been like a good couple of months, like yeah. since we had we actually uh, sat down and had a chat. And it's funny because obviously, um, every time we talk, um, we we talk we talk pretty regularly. To be fair, but every time we talk, you're, you're always you're kind of you're dropping knowledge, and you're you're almost you give a lot away in it. You give a lot of value, and and it's it's so funny because I have a conversation with you about something, and then years later. I see everyone else kind of <laughs> jumping on it and and doing similar things, yeah. and it's like every every step of the way you've been ahead of you've been ahead of the game, and you've kind of like you've been a pioneer. You've always had to like create your own path, and I don't mm-hmm. really think I like me personally. I don't really think you get enough credit for it because I, I guess people they 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 just take it as yeah, everyone's doing it now. But there's a lot of things that you were doing way before people were people were doing it and i was talking to my wife the other day about um talking about i was, go, I was going through um listening to your album and i went onto your page mm-hmm. and you had you had up um the website and you were like yeah you can get it from the website and get an mp3 and absolutely like now people take that for granted yeah but when you yeah. did that and bearing in mind this was way before i did it on my on my um on my website with and i yeah. did it on my website for a third party as well you didn't do that you did it yourself Yes. Like, go, like, go on, man, talk about that. Let, let people know well, like, the how that. the psychology behind that really is, I mean, there's a few um, components to it. So first of all, there's black ownership that plays a part. Mm. Yeah. And there's also um, a lot of people are setting up their, their structure on the backs of social media. Yeah. Yeah. So YouTube or whatever. The issue with that is, is that if they shut down, you're shut down. Yeah. Yeah, so that was the first thing that we wanted to address, what to make sure that we stood independently. And so anyone wanted to get anything from us, it, it, it mattered not whether another site was up or not. Yeah. You know what I mean, so that was the first thing. And then also you got you got the whole um, being able to get people's information. Mm. So then you can directly interact with the people that are interested in your product or part with money to gain your product. You know exactly who they are. And for me... I came from the era of actually pressing up the vinyls and the CDs and going to a distributor. Yeah. So when that era ended, I didn't know who, uh, to this day, I still don't know who bought that music, who yeah. purchased them. And that's tens of thousands of units sold. And I have no mm. idea who these people are. Right. So I was like, okay, so going into a new era, there's going to be another era after that and so on and so forth. And I can't keep having to start again from zero all the time in terms of having people's information. Yeah. So scratch that. Let's set up our own our own structure, our own website, and make sure that they 
that we don't we need to use as little third parties as possible so we can get the information mm. so that's really the you know the mindset behind it i think um that's it's that mindset is really forward thinking it's quite brave as well because what you what you kind of did is you set yourself apart and you've you've kind of decided yeah you're not going to do this year but i'm doing this because again it's like we're going for we're, we're talking about long term growth we're talking about um proper um fan engagement and retention yeah. and understanding and it's and okay this is the funny part about this year so we had this conversation probably the first time yeah like easily a decade ago maybe maybe before right mm. now in that time we've seen um a lot of subscription services pop up so we've seen we've seen spotify um pop mm. up we've mm. seen we've seen what netflix are doing um and we're and now we're understanding the importance of data uh -huh. and how important it is to know who your customers are because uh -huh. really and truly that's where you get the benefit from that's, that's right. where you get the value from a customer but this is that's stuff right. that you were this is stuff you were telling me like i'm saying like over a decade ago when i didn't even understand i like i knew it from a music point of view like oh yeah cool selling your music but there's so many there's there's so many other um benefits and the the technology is so far reaching and i don't think when you were on that way before anyone really knew even you know what it's mad actually um joe budden on his show they had this this thing about yeah. about yeah. uh how much yeah. is a stream yeah, so, worth yeah 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 i saw that and, all right so go on go on yeah but like again these, these are conversations people are having now but you yeah. were having that conversation way back yeah no one wanted to hear it no like, i think um for me when the whole, I never thought you would ever stop pressing vinyl and CD, yeah. Right. So when there was a there was a moment in time, there was a gap in time where it was done for vinyl initially. That was the word on the street. It was done for vinyl. Yeah. And I didn't have a website, so right. in in that in between time, I had nothing. See. And I sold thousands, and I had I had no information at all. So I said, okay, well if it can transition for vinyl, which have been pressing for what, 40, 50 years, mm. up until that point, maybe even longer, yeah? So the industry was was um, built on that, yeah. yeah? And if that can end, then whatever comes from that can is definitely gonna be a cycle because technology's moving quicker and quicker, right? Yeah. So if technology is moving faster, then whatever the wave is now, iTunes, as, as it was at that time, that we went from that to iTunes, which is downloaded MP3s, yeah? Yeah. When that wave ends and iTunes ain't the one no more, mm. I don't want to be in a position where I've got to start all over again and reach out all over again and find out who these people are all over again because when iTunes sell your music, they don't give you, at least I, I never put my stuff in there, so I don't know, but as far as I know, they don't give you the information of the people that bought your stuff. No. Nah. So when that's done, you got to start again yep. and reach out to those people again. You understand yep. what I'm saying? So I thought, well, iTunes is, is an error. And when yeah. that error's over, which is, which you know, it's kind of streaming now, whatever. Yeah. Yep. So when that error's over, I don't want to be in that position again. So we just thought, scratch that, mm. come off that and build organically. So no matter what errors change or whatever, it doesn't affect our information and yeah. our connection with, I mean, with the supporters and that. I still think um, there's, because it, it's, even now, yeah, obviously you've been doing it and you're talking about it, but I still think where we are now, we're still not, um, there's still so many people going down that, that path that kind of, it does kind of lead to nowhere in the end. And and every yeah. year we have a situation, we're going to talk about in a bit anyway, about the, um, the Meg Thee Stallion situation. Mm. Um, but every year we have situations where we see artists who we think are doing well, begging to get off their label. So we see yeah. it with probably the biggest streaming artists at the moment, other than Drake. We see like Lil Uzi Vert again, talking about, I want to get off my deal. Um, We've seen it with um, uh, what's his name, um, the other kid, the one who did the the uh, Gucci Gang. Every anyway, he's in in the same situation. Yo, I want to get off my deal. I want to get off my deal, and yeah. it's funny because we just keep going down that path. And then there's artists like Ryan Leslie. <laughs> that's my that's my dude. Right. So you're it, it's it's like laughing at everyone. Like, huh? 
Is that is that you lot still on that? And That's even right. and, and even Jay Z says it. Like you, you you guys still you still guys still searching for deals. That's for right. Real. That's but right. For some reason, a lot for some reason artists still they're still not understanding it because what we're looking at or what we've been conditioned to to do or look for is we want the hype and we want that first um wave of money because that's right. it's that it's that slave mentality or that um my, my thing it's is that hood always, mentality it's, yeah. it's, that, it's that i need to get out the hood as quickly as possible like it's like you touched on it it's a slave mentality that's one mm. side of it and also in ter- if you're talking about black artists mm. then you've got um you've got a situation where black artists look over there and see what's popping over there with them artists over there and not realizing that's a completely different culture yeah, and completely different set of rules, and a lot of black artists refuse to believe that. Mm. So because it pops for them over there, and they get their issues rules in that way, that if I follow the same path, sign to the same labels, it's going to work the same way for me. Yeah, okay. but the difference, the difference is all right. So let, for example, let's take uh, country music. Yeah. Yeah. So by and large, when the transition happened and everything went digital, country music didn't didn't really go down in sales. No. And they weren't they weren't giving out free mixtapes and that kind of stuff. They continued to generate revenue. Now that's a cultural thing. So their fans operate culturally different right. to our fans. So you can't try and sign to the same labels to try and get the same results that a country artist was getting back then if mm. you're not a country artist. Because mm. you're not gonna you're not gonna appeal to those same fans. They've got different behavioural patterns. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um but black black artists especially the generation before us and whatnot, they were programmed to just go and search for deals and they never ever once considered ownership or right. whatever. Or the fact that what works for them and the results they get, we may not get. Like for example, with streaming that. Mm. Streaming, I feel like that only works if you're medium to top artist, if you're an independent artist, the revenue that you get from streaming, you ain't getting enough views or streams to make that make sense to you. Yep. So there's no point in even going on that platform, in my opinion, until you've got some serious numbers behind you. And if you can get those numbers mm. and you're independent, you don't need to go on a streaming platform. It doesn't make any sense. That's that's true. I think I think there's a there's a few things, there's a few things there. So and again as well, yeah, we, we and you we got slightly different views on on the streaming thing. Obviously, I'm on streaming platforms, yeah. And mm-hmm. and the way I see, but but at the same time, I still, I still understand the direction you're coming from, and the, um, I guess, I guess it, it, it to me it's always a balance thing, and again we've had this conversation bare times, so I always see it as like, um, people are looking in a certain place, and the difference is, I can either be in a situation where I need to approach them or they need to find me or I can be in a place where they're already looking again there's some trade off though so again it's like it's the trade off it's like well well, you're going to be you're losing something and and again either like, way in it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah true but yeah, then, yeah, yeah, then yeah, it yeah. becomes then it just becomes okay then well what would you rather lose and that's it. it it to me it does make sense what you're saying because you're that that ownership what you've got is forever that's forever and again streaming platforms we've seen it so many times we've seen it bare times with streaming platforms moving and changing and also what we've seen is people deciding this is what a stream is worth and 0.004 pence is is a stream so again it's like okay yeah you're on the platform you're getting big numbers but you're not getting any money from it so then again, See, that's the trade-off. What do you want? You want the fame? You want the numbers? Or do you actually want something where you can you feed You hit the nail on the head. It's, it, it depends on, like you just said, it depends on what you're in the business for. Yeah. Now, I'm not interested in being famous. <laughs> I mean, I'm interested in being an artist, yeah? Mm. And I'm interested in making a living from being an artist. Now, if you want to be famous while you make a living, that's a different conversation. Yeah. Yeah? So me um, not putting my music on all these platforms means that I'm not talked about because I'm not as visible, mm. yeah? But let's say if I sell 10 copies of my first album yeah. in a week, I'm not even sure how many streams I'd have to do to generate the <laughs> revenue that, that, that gets. And that's just 10 copies, yeah? yeah? But album at eight pounds, you know what I mean? Mm. So I'm not really sure. And um, also the thing about streaming is 
like you said, it's give and take. Now, if you want, if you're, if you've created enough attention where people are looking for you, yeah, then it makes sense to be on that platform also if people are looking for you and your name's buzzing yeah. and you're at that point where people might look for you in on a streaming service. And mm. if enough people, if they find you, if they stream it and that makes enough revenue for you to live, then that makes sense. But yeah. that doesn't, for most people, and also record labels have a contract with the streaming services that yep. you don't have when you sign up to them as an independent. Yep. A completely different split. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? But I'm trying to get that across, especially to, to young black artists. That yeah. That's something they don't understand. They feel like if they're not on that platform, they're missing out, mm. and that's it. It's hard for, to get that across. If they, I've got the experience of actually selling vinyl and actually knowing uh, how much a unit is worth. Mm. So I, I can make an informed decision as to whether that actually makes sense for me to go up on there. But yeah. these youngins nowadays, they feel if they're not on there, they, they feel like they're missing something out the gate. So... But there's there's a another thing you've just you just kind of brought up as well, yeah. So, um, the idea this is what happens a lot as well. So if you look at my my streaming numbers, so I'm talking about myself here as an artist, yeah. My streaming numbers aren't too bad, yeah, for like an independent artist. Um, but my streaming numbers aren't my streaming numbers. My streaming numbers come from me being put onto playlists, right? Yeah. So. This is another. This, so this is another thing as well. The, the way I can, the way I can break this down. Um, if you go to, if you you get booked to do a show, yeah. So say I get booked to be in in a lineup, and this lineup has bare other artists on the lineup, yeah. Everyone's coming to see who they're seeing to come. Some people are just coming to the night anyway. I'm on that lineup as well, so yeah. I get to perform in front of I don't know five hundred people, yeah. I get paid, yeah. and I get paid I get paid uh, 300 quid yeah to, to yeah. perform 20 minute set boom 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 so the diff- to me that's that's like a the, the streaming platform you're on a playlist now there's another way of doing things which is like the way that I prefer to do things is I'm doing my own headline show everybody who's coming to that show is coming to see me right. now, now I may not have 500 people come in, come into the venue. I might only, might only have 250 people come and see me. But instead of making two, 300 quid or whatever, 250 pounds, I'm now making 800 pounds because it's all right. changed around. And I feel like that is really like what you've been doing the whole time or what you've been pushing. That's the essence, yeah. That's the business yeah, model. Like you've yeah. got to look, it, just, it like you said, it depends. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'll never put my stuff on streaming services. Mm. It just has to make sense. I'm not doing it for the sake of doing it. You know, you have to be a bit, we have to be a bit more strategic, you yeah. know, because a lot of the times also when you put your stuff up there, a lot of, uh, I can't be certain that you're not giving up your intellectual property. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I can't be so I don't know, because I haven't done business with them yet. I'm not mm. really sure if, you know, what you're giving up. But if I'm going to give that up, I need to be heavily compensated. Yeah. And to be heavily compensated, it's better to come to those, those um, services with the audience already behind you, then you then you've got leverage. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And but people but again, because the new artists now they're coming they come up they're coming up in a generation where this is all they've seen, this is how they've consumed music, they think this is the only way. They've yeah. got time to do all that. Mm. To put themselves in a position to have leverage. They'll they'll try to gain the leverage on the platform. And yeah. like you know what I mean? I'm not criticizing, I just want them to have all the information. Like you said, it depends whether you want to be famous, whatever. But you need to be fully informed before you make the decision, and that's what Joe Buttons was saying. Yeah, like you know, what I mean, you need all the information. And I don't, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see artists nowadays caring about the information, especially when you're talking about young artists. So let's talk about um, uh, video platforms, YouTube platforms. So YouTube platforms are funny because obviously it's a platform on a platform, right? right. So already that that's been that's been split. Um, yeah. you ain't seeing there's a lot of stuff you're not seeing even when yeah. you look at analytics there's a lot of stuff you're missing out yeah. then you've got artists that are paying a YouTube channel yeah. to put their video on their platform yeah. now this video is getting views because the platform is big but if yeah. that artist then went on their own channel and did it they'd get yeah. nothing yeah. so then it's like well what did you what did you pay for because they didn't come to see you As and, and again for some artists it does work so yeah. if, you're, if you're consistent on that and you can afford to throw your 200 pound of video, or whatever for, for a year 
and, yeah. and build up, then you can be in a good place. But I've seen people do that where they've done it for a year, been getting really good numbers. They drop their own thing. It don't do what it's supposed to do. They drop right, their album. Yeah. It don't do what it's supposed to do. Their shows ain't doing what they're supposed to do. So again, you're kind of like, you're, you're doing the hype thing. We're seeing your name out there. We're seeing you getting the numbers. But when it comes to the real numbers with a pound sign in front, yeah, it's, the, it's the conversion rate. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. they say that on on social media, about ten percent of your followers actually convert into sales. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and roughly that's kind of where it's worked out for me. But then I've got an, another network of where I've got all my all my customers' information. So that combined yeah. is a different. It, it's a different uh, taking for me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, YouTube. YouTube is one of the platforms that I use because I think that um, it, you just see it's one of the places that YouTube allows you to put a visual aesthetic to your music. Yeah. Right? So I I don't see YouTube in the same way that I see Spotify. Right. So I interact with YouTube. We got our own channel and all that mm. kind of stuff. All of our all of our videos are up, are up there and whatever. So um, because of that aesthetic, yeah, and I think that. Um, the video that you put up can it seems to be able to travel more organically more quickly in my in my sense now Spotify yeah. might it might work that way on Spotify for another artist it, mm. like again it depends on the behavioural patterns of your audience Yeah. but my videos work reasonably well on, on YouTube and I have yet to promote myself in the social era I haven't really yeah. promoted anything yeah. do you know what I mean but I'm still getting reasonable numbers on, on videos that are like 15, 20 years old mm. yeah so um, YouTube's all right for me. I don't see YouTube the same way that I see Spotify. Let's um, I mean, let's talk about that as well. Um, another thing you were early on was music videos. Um, yeah. The, just again, the aesthetic, the way they looked, the effort you put into them. Um, and again, I, I feel like that was at a time where I, I don't know. I, I I didn't see there was a lot of people doing a lot of videos that looked the same. Mm. You were you were the first person to really actually. Do you know what? Let's go. Let's. Take, let's just go back, man. Let's just talk about this because right. we're talking about um, the album. We're talking about it being it being twenty years. Um, yeah. So let's just go back to that time. There's a certain it's certain elements about what you did um, sonically, okay. Um, content wise, mm-hmm. um, and vis- and visually. So let's just go back. Talk me through what was the mindset going into what you were producing and what you were seeing around, and why did you decide to go a different way or what sparked it in you to go, ah, oh, do you know what? They're doing this. I've got something else. You know what it is? A couple of things. Like, first off, money. So lack of resources, yeah? It meant that I had to be creative with how I separate myself from everybody else's sound. Mm. Yeah. Second of all, I uh, until I came into, until I released Don Grammar, mm. yeah, which was my first release on my label, and that's 20 years old this year, and obviously the label's 20 years, 20 years old this year as well. So it's, when I released Don Grammar, um, I didn't know until I released it that there was a separate UK hip hop scene and you, and hip hop was seen differently right. for UK artists than it was for US. Because mm. as a consumer, I just used to buy whatever was hot. If it was hot, yeah. I just consume it, you get me? Yeah, okay. So like, it wasn't until I got into UK hip hop that I realized that child, it, we're seen different. Mm-hmm. So, as I absorbed it, I realized a lot of people were sticking to certain patterns. Everybody, you know, there was like three or four different wine patterns that people would use and they'd pick which, whichever suited them and they'd stay in that lane and no yeah. one was challenging the music. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, I just thought, okay, I've got nothing to lose. No one knows who I am. I'm coming out of my own label. I have no features, no nothing. So, fuck it. Like, if I'm going to go down, I might as well go down swinging. So, I'll just, I'll just come out with a completely different sound and if it works, yeah, then I'll stand out. Do you know what I mean? Plus... I didn't really have much options because the money was low. So I didn't have much, you know, racks in my studio or anything like that. I, didn't, yeah. I had limited sounds. So I tried to find a creative way to use those sounds. So that's really all it was. So like, okay, so if, if we, we, we go back to so the first thing I, I would say that, that stood out to me was the sound was different. At the time, a lot of people were doing the East Coast sounding boom bap type. Yeah, type and thing. the Wu-Tang. The Wu-Tang yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so you came out with an album that sounded super unique, um, very different. I'd almost like, it's weird. Like I was trying to think today, like what, how it hit me. And back then it was kind of like, 
you were doing a, like a complex version of Swiss Beats. Okay. And I, I, I and it always and it's only today, like or the last couple of days, I've been listening back, and I'm just like, yeah, that's what it was, because it was like it just cut through, it just cut through differently, because you'd be listening to other people's tracks, and then your track would come on, it'd be like, it just feels different. It felt very um, authentically UK. It felt very, but at the same time, it just it felt like it could have come from anywhere. Like there yeah, was there was yeah, a lot yeah, of elements yeah. to it. So yeah, who were you who were you influenced by? to come with a sound that wasn't like anybody else's? Well, in terms of production, yeah, um, Dre was my biggest influencer. See, okay. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, me. And Dre, me and Dre saw things the same way. Like, I already had a belief that hip-hop didn't have to sound gritty and grab. Like, back in them days, people were sampling. Yep. And they and they liked the pops and the samples and the kind of the, the groove that that would give the sample yeah. sometimes. Yeah, so um, a lot of people's productions at the time would sound a bit muddy. Mm. on purpose yeah yeah and i'm cool with that and i love that and i bought that but um i also liked music sounding clean and defined at the mm. same time and dre had this view that you know hip-hop doesn't have to sound muddy it can sound clean and defined and he did that mm. and i just love I, I love everything having its place sonically yeah. you know what i mean and um frequencies sitting in the right places so dre was a big influence in mm. terms of that side of it but my other influences came from outside of hip-hop Okay, so drop me because a, a lot of people say that as well. Um, talking to Nighty P the other day, and he was saying yes, about how yeah. his um again influences on the music you make, and I'm exactly the same way as well. Like the influences, I would say, I'm 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 more heavily influenced by dancehall, reggae, and dub than I am kind of from any other genre of music while making any sort of hip hop, whether it be whether it be uh, um, trap, whether it be drill, whether it be grime, to me, there's always an element of um, that dub style that comes into it. So what were your other influences in making music or in making beats? Uh, yeah, obviously, um, West Indian parentage, mum was Jamaican, dad's Bayesian. Cool. So, um, so there was a lot of reggae music in my house and a lot of soul music. Oh, okay. You know I mean? Yeah. Um, so my other influences, heavy influ- influences, were like Sheik. You know, um, Nile Rogers, See, okay. Bernard Edwards, R.I.P. Like Sheik, their their production was insane. Anything that was produced by Sheik, mm. I loved. And as I've gotten older, I realised music that I loved. I didn't even know it was by them. I found that it was you know the reason See. I love it is because they produced it or whatever. So Sheik was a heavy uh, influence. And then you got. The Silvers and Leon Silvers, he's a heavy producer. So he's behind uh, groups like uh, Dynasty and Shalimar. Okay. And, you know what I mean? And loads of other stuff as well. So um, that was heavily influential to me. And obviously in the hip hop side, Premier, mm. uh, loved Premier. And, um, you know, Swiss, Timbaland especially, because Timbaland was another producer there where his production was clean. Yeah. But it banged at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, those were the in, those were the main influences in my music. Um, so there's there's another kind of an element of your your sound. It's very like I feel like you might have been it for, for my ears anyway. The first person to really um, have commentary on UK hip hop music while right. making UK hip hop music because a right. lot of, a lot of people would would say things off the record. Yeah. But no one ever really addressed like issues yeah. we were having. And you were the yeah. first one to really just straight up say, nah, like you lot are fucking about like. Yeah. So, but, but, but did you, do you ever get any pushback from that? Cause I've, cause I, again, I kind of feel like, I, I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing yet, but in the scene, there's very, not a lot of people really talk up on record there's people say things everyone talks behind the, behind the scenes yeah, and everyone yeah, 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 has phone real. call conversations but you're not you're the only person that i know on that on a bigger level as well like obviously underground acts were kind of doing it but the only person who actually had a voice who was really speaking about those kind of issues involving the actual industry so was there any pushback with that from other acts or the it's industry funny itself? because it's funny because like i came in the game ready for beef Mm. Like, so obviously I came up in the Jay-Z Nas era. Yeah. You know what I mean? 50 Jar, 
and a whole heap of other beasts and you know I, I can't, numerous beasts yeah. so I just thought it came with the territory and because like what you're saying because I was so outspoken mm. and I was talking about things that a lot of artists were doing yeah uh, I expected that but I didn't I, it didn't come when I expected it See. at all it was just silence but I think the reason I was able to do that was that that's that independence thing again there's a lot of people they were put even if they were putting out music independently mm. it was with a view to getting signed by this dude so yeah. let me not say any anything that will fuck this dude off yeah do you know what I mean yeah, yeah, so yeah. um and I didn't care about none of that see and I I love the music um you know, for its authenticity and whatever. And I could see that a lot of people were bringing like agendas into the music. So it was easy for me to speak out because my platform was my own. Yeah. Even from back then, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was able to afford to put out vinyl and all that and shoot videos on my own. Yeah. So I could say whatever I wanted to say. I could address it head on. Mm. You know, um, I, I hold <clears> on to we had this com- We've had this conversation before and I keep saying this a lot, but we have, we've had so many conversations like, yeah. so, but one of the conversations we've had um, has really been the idea of um, UK hip hop going from black culture to mm. uh, middle class white culture. Yep, yep. Um, and 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 you know what? It's fr- so yesterday, um, Q Rock interview. Mm-hmm. We're talking, boom, boom, boom. The interview stops, and then we're talking off, and then it came up, and I was like, "Oh, we should have kept it rolling, man." Right, right. Um, but again, I think certain people are less less willing to talk about that on in public. And yeah. I know you've never been, you never shied away from that. You've had, it, yeah. you've, you've mentioned it, referenced it in in music before. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you? Like, how did you? How do you see? Did you see a change? And do you even see? A problem in the way things are, the way things are going, because um, I'm always like, I'm always super conscious of not being a kind of person who's like, nah, she needs to be the old way, and I'm very conscious also of having the mentality like, um, make America great again, make hip hop great again, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and it's, it's it's not that. So no, explain explain what it is. Well, it's okay. So you have to bear with me with this answer, right? It's cool. So like, came out in two thousand. And I was only initially, I was only really out for four years initially, yeah? But in that time, everybody wanted a record deal, mm. right? So let's, let's talk from our culture, from black culture. If mm. everybody that's, we're the creators of the music, the originators of the music and the vibe and everything, yeah? yeah. And the culture over here. But everybody who creates it wants to give it up, wants to sign it, mm. sign it away, yeah? And what that creates is, even though you're the the creators and the originators of the music, yeah. you're giving away power. If right. every single person wants to sign over there, then over there has power whether they whether they create or not, right? Yeah. So when that happens, you no longer control who who gets in and who gets pushed. Yeah. And I see that's what was happening with UK hip hop. Mm. Some man in UK hip hop really didn't have the skills that the push they was getting suggested that they had. Mm. You understand? So what that created is that UK hip hop stayed in a comfortable lane. So every yeah. man said, you know what? Let's just stay here and we can all eat. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, you know, let's flow like this. Let's, make, let's have our production like this. As long as we keep it around here, mm. We, we we all eat and we're good, yeah. right? So UK hip hop stayed stagnant, you know, like um, lyrically and sonically. Mm. And where there were a couple black men getting through whatever, um, we maybe thought that it was benefiting us, but it wasn't because now you've lost control and you're not really dictating what goes on. Before you know it, you're adjusting your sound and your energy to fit into this aesthetic so you can get signed or get paid. Right. Yeah. The problem with that is when the next wave came, when the next youth came, mm. when them man came to to us as black kids, they come into older black artists that are rappers or whatever. Yeah, and Kano spoke about this on Hot ninety seven, and upset a lot of man in you know in our generation and up. I had to tell them man, nah, cool. He's speaking the truth. So when that generation came to us. They're looking at it like we're, you know, we're the, we're the owners of the culture. We're the gatekeepers. We can bring them through. 
But what they found, what they found out is they was getting rejected. And the reason they were really reget- getting rejected is because them artists, they had no power. Mm. Do you understand? They had, they had no way of dictating who was going to go through. They were more concerned with um, making sure they got their deal and yeah. they're nice. Yeah. And as long as they're nice, that's them. Mm. And there was a whole bag of man that was doing that. And UK hip hop, especially on the black side of things, people weren't bringing people through. Right. So now you've, as a result of that, the man, you know, Kano and them generation, whatever, that to create their own lane. Yeah. Yeah. Co- coincidentally, as they're creating their lane, SBTV, Link Up and Rat Lock pop up. So now they've got a platform and an outlet and channel, you know, you're coming off the back of the channel, you kind of emerging and whatever. So then man have full access, yeah. which we didn't have. And they've gone through. Mm. Yeah. And now you've got the, the, the generation before and the generation before that as well, vexed that there's this gap now and yeah. why and reaching back. But now if you retain ownership of your shit, you wouldn't have this issue. Okay. You know what I mean? And uh, <clears throat> that was my problem with it. I could see that coming. So I was I was putting out other artists and I was putting out younger artists and so on and so forth. Yeah. So um so when it came to this point in my career, I didn't I don't have those issues. Right. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. So um, our our problem was back then the short sightedness, and we were really quick, and it's still a mentality now, really quick to give up what we own. Yeah. Yeah. So, because in in the way I the way I saw things or the way I, the way I see things, um, I felt like they 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 came up a, a point where UK hip hop no longer represented me. Exactly. So I rebelled against it, right. and I made a lot of enemies. Um, and I say enemies; these are this is rap, not, not yeah, real yeah, enemies. Yeah, I slap yeah. I slap these men up any day of the week. Right, um, right, right. I made a lot of enemies by just having been very combat combative to what was being pushed in front of me. Just the image of it, um, because it didn't it didn't represent where we came from. Nah, not at all. Like. There was a lot of men that were, like I said, that were pushed to the forefront. I've never seen them. Mm. Uh, well, I didn't didn't understand their energy. No, I know for sure they didn't understand ours. Yeah? yeah. But they were being they were being pushed forward as representatives of all of us. Yeah. You understand? And we didn't really get to di- take. We couldn't really differentiate ourselves from them and say, well, you know, like yeah, we're UK hip hop artists, but we ain't them, man. Yeah. I don't know them. I don't come from them that any because we. Not enough of us created platforms to counter that narrative. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? At one point, I felt like I was standing out there, me and a couple other men, really on our own. Do you mm. know what I mean? You know what? I just got to um, plug in. Yeah. Can you hold on a sec? Just yeah, man. One sec. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. So we're um, we're talking to to we're having an interesting conversation with Carl Hines right now about um, something that I'm quite passionate about is the the the, the face of. UK hip hop, what UK hip hop became, um, and where it's going. There's definitely a conflict between old style, new style, and different genres. Um, also, backgrounds and cultures clashing, and um, that's kind of where we're gonna go. We're gonna dig into because I just I wanna. It, I'm always interested to get other people's um, other people's opinions on 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 how things how things go. My bad, my bad. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah. So, sorry about that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, like I was saying about about not things just just kind of not matching up or not being not being represented in, in a certain way, and and part of the problem is yeah. So when I first got into into um UK, what was again? I'm like you as well, yeah, because I didn't know there was a difference between hip hop and UK hip hop. It's only when you get That's into right. it and everyone's like, nah, man, this is UK hip hop, UK UK, and you're like. All right, cool. Is what it is, and it's, mm-hmm. it's it's so funny because I've had this conversation with you. I'm kind of going off on a little, a little side, a little side path here, yeah. But I've had this conversation with you. I've had this conversation with uh, Roots Maneuver. I've had this conversation with Kalashnikov, and it's a situation where you 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 do something because you you love music. You then realize you're in a scene, and then you're like, Nah, but this ain't even what I was trying to get into. To be fair, that's right. Like, yeah. and so yeah. so so you kind of got a little bit of a like. Nah, like, nah, I ain't even really doing this for you, man. Like, like that. It's mm-hmm. not, it's not that. But what I, what I always, what we always saw, yeah, 
Um, because there were there's there's a lot of respected that I would say UK hip hop artists that didn't come from London that didn't come mm-hmm. from they not even I don't mean like that came from hoods and other places I mean people that came from middle class backgrounds or whatever but came in and are respected because they showed respect to the culture. Right. So for for me those people I'll never have a problem with. Absolutely. What where, where I feel it went wrong is. Because again, talking about ownership mm-hmm. and also understanding who buys into the culture, what mm-hmm. happened was these men are in the culture doing their thing. Everyone from the outside points them out and goes, that's what we want to buy into that. And then they create their own scene on the side. And it just so happened that that scene became almost the dominant the dominant face of UK hip hop. And then us in the middle who started this thing and who respect it for what it is are like, Yo, that's okay. Cool, do your thing, but then there's there's also like a disrespect to those that are doing it that way. Like it just it got mad. You know confused. what it is? I I don't think that um I don't think that I agree with you and and to the point that you said that the audience chose. I don't think the audience chose. I think that um the audience were told this is what you should choose. Okay. And I tell you how, how I know that, right? So Don Grandma my first single did really well and then uh, it called the interest of wordplay mm. subsidiary of virgin right right um so i had two instances with don grammar that let me know that the people that were in charge didn't have a clue yeah right so with wordplay it's all good uh, you know i uh signed i licensed the original to them to keep ownership okay but let them have the remix. So the remix featured Shawnee T, Black Twang, myself, The Rottenness, yeah? Yeah. Big up Shawnee, big up Twang. Big up Nutty P as well, by the way. And um, so where that remix was um, part wait, of Wait, 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 Nutty P did that? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm but I, say, I was like, right. <laughs> I was like, wait, nah, hold no, up, man. Up, <laughs> yeah, I meant, I meant to say big up Nutty. No, I produced it. See, but, um, see. So when, when it was time for them to put out the album, mm. I said to them, listen, go with Don. Like, Don Grandma is the, the most prominent tune out of, out of this and the other single they wanted to go with. I hadn't even heard of the other group right. that they wanted to go with. And they wouldn't listen. They didn't care. I told them the numbers that I was selling on my own label. Yeah. Because yeah? by the time they signed it, obviously I'd already sold out of my mm. stock of it. Yeah. Mm. So I said, listen, I've really, I've really sold boom, boom, boom in this space of time. And man keep, man keep calling me, telling me they can't find any copies. Yeah. The audience, right, you know, the anticipation, all that is right there. The attention is right there. Just, you know, utilize that. Boom, go true. And then you can drop what you want to drop. They, they didn't care. It wasn't about numbers for them. It wasn't about numbers for them. It was about retaining power. And listen, we decide who gets the shine. That makes sense. Right, yeah. so they they come to you like it's about numbers, it's about business, but from and and the second example was um, when Don Gra- Don Grammar came out and I took it to distribute the first distributor. Mm. I was telling him, listen, this tune here, people don't know who I am, but everyone's looking for it. So go out there, push it, and you lot are nice. Yeah, but they sat on it because they hadn't heard of me. They like Don Grammar for its first three four months. It sold 20 copies because them man sat on it. See. So I had to switch it, you know what I mean? So they, it wasn't about what was really popping. They mm. didn't care. If it wasn't names that they, that, that was their brethren's nephew right. or names that they went to school with in, you know what I mean? Mm. I, I don't know, in what, suburbia or whatever it mm. was. If it weren't no link, they didn't care. Right. That's where we lost control. So I don't think that the audience chose. I think they presented certain people to the audience and the audience bought into it. So, um, I guess kind of moving forward, do you think the industry, do you think artists have, have learned from that situation? Because I look at, um, I look at the artists we have now that I would say are at the forefront of the scene. So I look at, um, Kano's, you look at Stormzy, Wretch Free 2, um, Crepton Conan, there's a lot of guys out there that are in, seem to be in okay positions. Um, are we gonna see? Are we gonna see like history repeat itself with 
them being them we finding out they're in positions that they're not really eating the way they really should be eating in the future. Um, like what have we learned? Now the difference is that's not happening. They're like the reason that it's not happening for them, like the way it happened for us, is they didn't they didn't relinquish control of the culture of the scene. Right. So they dictated who were who were projected as the kings of this scene. Yeah. They made the call. Yeah. yeah. So the platforms they went on to, it was for us by us basically. Yeah. That, that sort of they they had the luxury of being able to to go onto platforms that had that mentality, yeah? Mm. So when they sat down at the negotiating table, they had leverage. Right. See what I'm saying? So um, I think you'll find that a lot of their mans are not eating the way that they're projecting, but that, that doesn't mean to say that they're not eating. Yeah, 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 yeah. See yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. in our generation, mans were not eating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? And couldn't do anything about it because they relinquished control. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the next generation, new generation, now the Kano's and all that lot, and then the generation after that, mm. yeah, um, it's not the case for them. Yeah. It, what they do with the bags that they're getting and their show money and all that kind of <laughs> that's stuff. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother yeah, discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And COVID-19 <laughs> is kind of, you know what I mean? Sorting out whether a man puts something away yeah. or set up their structure whether a man's just concentrating on flossing, like, yeah. and a couple of people out. That... But overall, <sighs> their man... They don't. They didn't have the problem we have because they retained ownership of their scene and mm. intellectual property. Yeah, that you know what? It's funny you mentioned about um this this COVID nineteen kind of stopping the bag for a lot of artists, and it, it, I feel like it is going to be interesting. I feel like a lot of the the mid the mid tier the mid tier rappers the 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 five grand the show rappers they 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 might be getting hurt a little bit. Because yeah, again, I feel so. you're, you're you're not. People don't get it, man. You're never you're never really in a position to really, really stack the way you want to stack, and that's why you got to do so many shows to really keep up with with. Obviously, you're spending a lot, and you're just part of a big machine. I don't think a lot of I I I I know for a fact, consumers don't understand it. They don't get it. They see it as something totally different. They're like on a uh-huh. whole other planet, and I uh-huh. feel yeah. I I, I really don't want to see. Man get hurt in this in this time, man. I hope I hope. You know what it is, right? Where what you what you asked me a question before about do I see it repeating? Yeah, mm. I do see this part of it repeating where you don't ha- these artists now that are coming up. They've got a, a decent to pretty large fan base. Yeah, yeah. following on social whatever. Yeah, they don't realize that if they sell directly to this audience. Their cake is different. Now, if they were selling directly mm. through the COVID-19 situation, like they had yeah, to set yeah. up, like, well, I, it's different. You're, you remain eating. Yeah. And you ain't you ain't got to look at um, 0.005 yeah. of, of a stream. Yeah. Like, but if you'd set yourself up independently, even though everything's shut down, because mm. the internet is still up, you and your audience could have had a direct thing right yeah. now. You could have put out, you know, if you're low yeah. on food, you could put out a little single... Tell a man, you know, go cop that for a pan. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's where they're making their mistake. Yeah. Not necessarily in their negotiation and mm. the money they're getting. It's just that they don't... Re- that I don't think, once again, I don't think black artists realise the power that they're holding. They still feel like they need something else. Mm. And they've already got the audience. Yeah. Yeah. You you, yeah. you spoke on um, this uh, this little uh, clash between uh, Wiley and Stormzy. Um where do you where do you where do you sit on that? Or like as far as like um the idea of who's who in the game, like do you even is it something you think about or like what what, what how do you how do you see it? Because I I always feel like there's two sides. There's the, the guys who kind of feel like nah, Stormzy's a puppet. Um, he don't really know what's going on. And there's this other side of Wiley kind of pushing himself as if he is. The, the independent face of of grime at the moment he's like he says all the time i'm not part of the machine like i've been in the machine i know what it is boom 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 i'm from the village how do you how do you see wiley fitting into that that narrative or the narrative he's pushing wiley wiley can create and project any narrative if he's accepted as the creator of the scene right, right? Because it's it's because it's built on it's built on the foundation of I started this shit. Yeah. So it doesn't matter that for a minute I went over there and, and got some corporate eatings. Yeah. Yeah. I could always come back 
because th this, and I know he doesn't take full responsibility of starting it, but the audience, yeah. you know what I mean? Like puts him in that position. So yeah. if you you if you're the originator of this culture uh, or that that splice of the culture, mm. then you can dictate. You can name what it is. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So um, because it all it all builds from his foundation. Yeah. He can say that. Yeah. All right. You know what I mean? Who who can argue it? Now mm. Stormzy is going can respond neatly because it my understanding is that Wiley came through him first. Yeah. Right? So Stormzy is responding. Yeah. But if Stormzy had come at him if it was the other way around, Stormzy would have had less of a leg to stand on mm. like with saying stand down, I'm the new king now. Yeah. But if you're responding and you're slapping a man up saying it's all right, just stand down. It's me it's my time now. Yeah. You can do that as a response. But because Wiley originated the thing, it wouldn't have worked the other way around. So I ain't got an argument. I don't have an issue with Wiley claiming that because mm. he's coming back with jewels now. So he's, he sees the setup. He sees yeah. what I saw. I mm. just didn't have to go through it to see it. Yeah. 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 So he's coming back now with the jewels and man ain't trying to air it. And he wants his props at the same time. Like, you know what? Yeah. And what I tweeted was, it's funny how you're getting that energy now, Wiley. Yeah. That you gave us man a little, you know, for a quick minute when you came in the game. And I understood yeah. why he did it. He needed to make sure, like you said, he wanted to make a clear distinction that I'm not that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, we yeah. were we were collateral damage because we were associated to that, even yeah. though we weren't that. Yeah, 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 so yeah I that's understand true. why he did it. You understand? <laughs> and we got hurt because it, yeah. it, it looked like he was talking about us. Yeah. And people from our own community have said, oh, okay, well, that's what's up. Fuck yeah. you lot. Wiley said it, and I see it. So, you know what I mean? And we had to work our way out of that. And um, I was just saying that you're getting a little bit of that energy now. Yeah. Uh, you're you're a little bit older yeah. than we was when you were saying we was old. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. hold that a piece from the <laughs> Hold that. He's a lot older. <laughs> He's exactly a lot older than we were. You know what I mean? That's but, funny. To counter that, he's got different money than what we had. At yeah, the time, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is the, the, there's always a massive conflict with with my relationship with who Wiley is, and how he portrays himself. And I feel like the 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 reason is a conflict there for me, yeah, because Wiley is is a much bigger artist than he portrays. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like numbers wise, like money wise, mm -hmm. like everything wise, and it's and it's, there's yeah. a What's it? What book is it? Forty Eight Laws of Power. When it says um to to be to um appear royal, be mm -hmm. royal, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, I always feel like Wiley doesn't wear the crown the way he should wear the crown. And at the same time, there's a lot of other artists that wear the crown and and, and have that air of you you man can't touch me about. Mm -hmm. And Wiley don't care about that, which is which is cool because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he's he's just real, isn't it? He's he's him. Mm -hmm. He's him. Like he is what he is. And I feel like. You know what I mean? It is it is what it is, but I just feel like a lot of people get the wrong get the wrong idea. They don't see it, and it's like he, he's saying things and doing things, and it looks a certain way. But if you can really see it, you're like, I see what you're doing, but yeah. it ain't coming across that way. And then you get someone said so. Um, he must have tweeted the other day, and he said, "Ah, oh, AJ Tracy, you might have to host on corn, yeah." And so yeah. someone else tweeted, "AJ Tracy is bigger than you ever were," and I was just like. They've got Did no they, content. Like, it? raw. Like, you, see, you know what? Here's the problem. This is this. It's all about recircling of energy, isn't it? Mm. The reason why that's happening... Right, I'm trying to explain this. The reason why that's happening to people like Wiley, which makes no fucking sense, right, is because get the energy that you put out. Yeah. Which is what I was... I was, I was kind of, like, touching on with my tweet. Yeah. 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 And Ricard, them man, like, a lot of men in UK... In in our culture, mm. from a certain age, thinks UK they think UK hip hop starts at geeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. which cuts out a whole heap of man that path. The, listen, you can't. I can't really. If man don't can't talk to me about outlaw posse, Duke, you know, caveman or whatever. If you got gunshot and all, you know, what I mean that era. If you can't. Yeah. If we can't have a conversation about that. We can't. Me and you can't talk UK. You're on something else. Yeah. Me and you can talk commercial. Yeah. Don't talk to me about UK. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't know who Rodney P is or Bionic, like it's a different conversation. Yeah. Hundred percent. But because we didn't retain ownership, 
the next generation that came after us don't give a fuck about yeah. what came before them because we didn't create no past for them. Yeah. Not me personally, but yeah. the generation yeah. represents, yeah? So that's the energy they came out with. Mm. So young kids saw, okay, well, it's about fuck the olders. Yeah. It's about what's popping now. Yeah. They're just giving that same energy back now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And in their perception, AJ Tracy is bigger yeah. for that generation, yeah. yeah? It's not a reality. No. Nah. Do you know what I mean? Same way that um, Giggs, who I love as an artist, it's not the reality that he was the the, um, the where UK hip hop started. Mm. But you just get the energy you put out. Yeah. That's how I see it. It's a yeah, man. I, you know, I, I I kind of I love watching the 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 youngers go at it, man. I, I, and I feel I feel like as well, yeah. it's it's while he's like a um he's a he's a funny guy as well because you whether you get it or not, yeah, with him it's all love. Like he just thinks he's playing. And he's like, I, that... think, I think I think it's strategic with Wiley. I think he's he's yeah. setting himself up for the next era. Yeah. And like, you know, it's about being relevant. And he's okay, well, I need to, you know, rebirth the relevance right yeah. now. So so these are the moves that I'm making. I agree with you, but it's not personal and it nah, ain't, you know what I mean? It's not real. And it's, it's funny. just positioning. Yeah, and it's funny because like the, what we we own we see we see the clashes, but we don't hear the phone calls that happen behind the scene. And 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 it's funny because it's like you know like when you were younger, yeah, there's that kid who wants to play with you, yeah, and he's like he's play fighting, boom boom boom, and you're like kind of play fighting with him as well, but you don't realize he's hitting you really hard, and you're like you're, you're not really trying to play in it. Yeah. You're just like yo, and bro. Now you're not sure what it is. Yeah, right you're now, like yeah. you're like bro. You're actually really you're you're really hurting me, and all he's trying to do is he he just he saw you and thought you're the biggest kid in the playground. You look mm-hmm. tough, mm-hmm. and he, he's trying mm-hmm. to show you a compliment, and I feel like. Mm-hmm. Wiley mm-hmm. has always has the energy, and yeah. a lot of people just like, don't respond that. Respond that, it. nah, yeah. they don't respond that way yeah, because it. it's like. And, but with him, it's all like it, it's, it's all love. It's like, nah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to come up, but I'm kind of bringing you up as well, because again, you know what? Yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on, go on, go on. Well, again, what, what they don't like someone like AJ Tracy. You look at AJ Tracy and go, yeah, AJ Tracy's big, but he's not Wiley big. Like, no. I, I, like numbers wise, like numbers, like numbers don't lie. The numbers are the numbers. He, he ain't, he ain't Wiley big yet. And that little clash back and forth is gonna bring them both up. But again, it's just, does AJ see it that way? Cause he might not, he might see it. Like, I don't want to clash with you. Like you're talking about my mum, bro. Like, and was Wiley's just like, I don't care about any of that. Like. You know what I think that speaks to as well? Wiley is um, from sort of my generation, our generation and the, the younger generation, they're a bit more sensitive. Mm. And we'll see that under the comments or whatever, like, you know, man, we'll take offense to that. And yeah. I'll be like, well, that's what I meant. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, they're a lot more sensitive. So they're not they're able to. Wiley well, comes from a sound clashing era. Uh, yeah, you know I mean. You're going, you, go, go. And go, you go. know how, man, you know how, man. Thank you. Go with a, a sound clash. And then that ain't nothing. Nah. You understand? So we know we're from that. But I, I think. The youngers, it's just they're more, you know. I've got a son that's that age and whatever, yeah. and you know, they're peace more emotion. That's the bit they I think don't. That's all that is. And it, it, it's so funny you say that, yeah, because to me, like, I love, I love sound clashing. I say this, I, I talk about this way too much. The amount of time I watch um, uh, Ninja Man vs Super Cat, mm-hmm. and like the things that get said, yeah, over, over, over beats, yeah, mm-hmm. is crazy. Certain men nowadays will, will, will reach for something for what's being yeah. said. Yeah, and not only that, they're telling you, yo, when we were doing that, we had we had the things on us. Every man on the stage mm-hmm. had the thing on him. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about, yeah, and it's like, yeah, and, and I feel like Wiley, again, Wiley coming from, from that, that from ever, that yeah, yeah like, it's just, it's just a different, it's a different vibe. So it's, it's, yeah, it's just a misunderstanding. It, like, like you said, it's love. Like, the yeah. mere fact, like, there's, there's an artist that came at me once. And um, he mentioned a whole heap of us. I remember. I think he mentioned you in the track yeah, and all that yeah, as well. Like, yeah. And um, I didn't take offense to it. I responded because I was like, yeah, I like that. Nice yeah. effort. Out yeah. of respect for what you did, let me respond. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it, it, it was worthy of a response. Yeah. Not, I didn't respond because it very, like, you know, and I don't think the younger generation understand that energy. And I think nah. that's where Wiley's yeah. coming from, that energy more. I saw that. I saw that as a big up. Like, right, you're mentioning me with them, man. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> cool. This is love. Exactly. I, mean, I saw man, man. I was like, yeah, what's good, brother? And yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it's and nothing. it's always and me and him been cool since then. Like, we're yeah, cool because he because he mentioned me on the track. Yeah, yeah I mean, he nothing. threw his job. I threw my job back, and I feel like exactly. that's the way it kind of should be. Um, in 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 a, in a way, but I, but I do get as well in this generation, like 
everyone's so every, you're right man everyone's so thin skinned like any anything that gets said it goes further than it needs to go and mm. not being able to kind of uh differentiate from this is music this is real beef and mm-hmm. again you're you're dealing with you're dealing with artists who've never been in real beef in it so they think it's mm-hmm. all the same they think that's the same. what that is yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah they've so, got the context that's what happens yeah. man Mm. But yeah, bro, man, this has been a this has been a, a great chat. We actually had some other things I wanted to talk to you about, but we're gonna when we do the proper studio business, we're gonna we're gonna do with that. Yeah, um, sit down with yeah, you, man. So I want to say thank you for your time. Also, I want to know like what's what's going on in what's the future hold for you, man? Okay, well, like first of all, we're we're dealing with the twenty year anniversary of the label, mm. so there's a documentary which I started five years ago for the fifteenth yep. anniversary, and then it kind of grew. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? you're you're in it. You know yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, as people heard about it, more and more people got involved. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it for the 20th anniversary because it kept going and going. So yeah. um, COVID 19 has messed up the release of that a little piece. Yeah, but that's coming. Do you know what nice. I mean? At some point this year, that's dropping, and it is is obviously um, music to commemorate the 20th anniversary of Ill Flavor Records. Mm. And also 20th anniversary of me as an artist as well. So that's first and foremost. And there's obviously new artists, do you know what I mean, that are bubbling, that are coming up. And um, a couple of things that I can't talk about right now. Cool, 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 cool. Do you know what I mean? But there's, you know, it's all, it's all music, it's all progression. Do you know what I mean? There's, an, there's sort of like more of an expansion and focus of promoting the website for the things that we spoke about earlier. Cool. So people are going to start to see that soon. Never promoted that. People have just mm. found it and bought off of it. It's never been officially sort of launch. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean? So, you know, I'm gonna launch that on my twentieth anniversary and then, you know, we'll just start building from there. Are you gonna drop are you gonna drop you come with a a, a car hands project? Yeah. Cool. Yep, yeah, you've got I'm gonna drop a little mixtape just to reintroduce and then there's an album that that's done and recorded already. Um I did tell I was gonna let you go yeah, but after I I'd be I'd be remiss if I didn't say. You know, um what I've always liked about your projects is um, I'm a big fan of sequencing, like how tracks fit, how yeah. stories get told yeah. um, and just how an album flows. Yeah. There's, I think um, Hindsight yeah. might be, is going to be in my, that would be in my top 10 all time, um, like easily top 10 all time UK albums. Um, I appreciate that. I just think like from when I, from when I got it, I was talking to my wife again, like that was around the time we, we got together. That's 2002. Hey, yeah. Come on. yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. So that's kind yeah. of like the, the year we got together. And yeah. um, I was playing that like nonstop. Um, everything about it to me was this, it, it, actually there's a lot of what I do now um, in, in, again, in sequencing, in storytelling, in production, in how things look like just mm-hmm. aesthetics, how it all looks, how it all comes together. Mm-hmm. That's the the blueprint. That album was literally one of the albums I looked at and was just like, how this works, how this feels is how I want projects to feel in I the future. I appreciate that. Right, appreciate so, that. Yeah, so, sequencing yeah. back then for me like um, was important because I was, I came up on It Takes a Nation of Millions, Public Enemy and mm. uh, um, Ice Cube, yeah. America's Most Wanted. Like, especially Ice Cube, America's Most Wanted. That sounded like a movie. It was the first time I, I put on a record and could hear a movie in it. And the sequencing and the storytelling was a major part of that. And that's yeah. where I kind of got that from. That's what got, that's, that's so funny you mentioned that because that's the album that got me into rap. So What, America's Most Wanted? Yeah, man. Yeah. So that was, the, that was the one I was like nine years old and that was the album, the first album I ever learned all the lyrics to. Um, yeah. It might be the first cassette I ever owned, like play that to the Walkman to the battery started going, it went slow, yeah. listening, yeah. oh right, I can hear the lyrics yeah. even better. Like, yeah, yeah. That it was, was the, the skits were just out of this world. And yeah. That, it set South Central like you could picture it, mm. and then the movies followed whatever. And I just wanted to do the same with yeah. the like East London or that kind of thing. So. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, man, it's it's mad. Also, as well, that's another that's another thing I didn't really get to go into as much. But the um, you being from East, mm. that was definitely a different sound than what the South looked. Because that's that's another reason why you kind of stood out as well. Because all we knew was South and North. Yeah, South had it. Yeah, South so it was like. like that was it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, you know what? And but for me, I didn't even before I knew where he was from, like Duke and all that. Um, 
you know, I was influenced by by his sound as well. So I, I came up with East representation. See. So I was able to contextualize it and you know what I mean? Yeah. And put it in. Like Duke was a was an influence for that for sure. MC Duke. See, 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 see. But yeah, man, it's been it's been a it's been a pleasure, man. I love chatting to you, man. Like Yeah, man. Respect. This, is, this is this is like People always kind of figure out like, oh, like how do you get your, you know, your ideas and where do you get, you know, I'm like, I just talk to the oldest, man. I just talk to the people who, who really do this. And to me, the, the knowledge you have, I, I said before, before we got on this, I said to people, yo, you need to come watch this because you're going to get value from it. And just understanding, I feel like understanding um, ownership is is what really sets you apart. Like, even if you can understand that, even if that's all you get from this, this um, interview today is... Own, own your own your music, like own your music, own, and own your part. platform. Yeah, like you can use the other platforms, but own your platform. Mm. Car. These, like, correct me if I'm wrong, bro. Ain't Spotify running at a loss? Uh, yeah. They ain't gone into profit yet, right? Nah, but that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother day. <laughs> and I'm not saying that they're gonna disappear overnight like that because we know it's a whole different setup. But yeah. yo, they're running at a loss. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah, might yeah. want to set up, you know what I mean, your own little site just in case that drops off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a they they they're running something else. They're running this. They're running scams, isn't it? They're running scams. Like let's just say it. They're running scams, and I feel like we're the the smart ones of us is, are the ones who just kind of just you're you're. What you're doing, you're always just kind of eating off the top, just whatever comes down, and you're mm-hmm. just trying to find where you fit in, um, because yeah, like you say, this whole thing can come crashing down very quickly. Yeah, it just have you can you can use their platforms. That's blessed, but just have your own. Mm. So if any if they crash down, you're still moving. That's and that's literally that. what I've that's at literally what I've that. done. And that came that came on yeah, yeah, after talking real. to you. I didn't get my I didn't get my website until I spoke to you and that's when I started getting my, doing my own thing where I could get the, they could download the album, the MP3 yeah. straight from And you me. got, yeah, but then you switch up with the clothing line. You know, yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's man. Like, but again, this is all just, again, it's, it just comes down to this, really talking to people that have already done it. Um, I feel like when it comes to um, uh, label business um, and really running a, running a label, you're the only, you are the only person, only independent label owner who is really about their business properly? Um, a lot of people like have labels, or whatever, but not they don't do it. There's there's, le- there's levels to this. So many people say they got record labels. You ain't got a record label, man. Like you need to go. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, you got you got a logo. Cool. I mean, I hear that everyone's got to start somewhere. Mm. I don't. I don't. I ain't. You know what I mean? I just love to see black people aspiring to do that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like that's 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 where you know what I mean our people aspire to do it and whatever level you're at at least you're at that level it's a start yeah, so yeah. big that up man cool That's cool cool well thank you thank you for your time bro um, appreciate it man yeah man um, hold the line I'm gonna I'm say goodbye to these these good people that are in the in the in the chat um, and I'll come chat to you in a sec so let's just see um, before before we go actually this is what I want you lot to do like I said we're gonna we're still doing giveaways in it yeah so I've got my album that I've given away, we're giving away one every day. Um, all you gotta do, go to the comment section, not the not the um the live chat. I see you lot in the live chat, Yemi and um Octane Blue. You lot you lot getting it in, man. What you lot exchanging numbers and thing, yeah? Is this hey, they say <laughs> they say that kind of chat room, you know? You see, hey, hey, remember Yemi's my little sister, you know? To behave. But yeah, go to the comments. I just want you to I want you to message in the comment. Your favorite car hire song, whichever one, whoever. I'm gonna pick someone at random, and uh, we're gonna we're, we'll send you we'll send you a signed copy of the album. Um, apart from you, Yemi, you can't get one because your family, so that'll be cheating. I'll just send you one anyway. But everyone else, go do your thing, guys. Please keep sharing, please keep liking, please keep commenting, please keep letting people know that we're out here. Tomorrow we're gonna be back with another big interview, talking to a top A and R in the game who has a lot of uh, information on this thing we call UK hip hop or hip hop or whatever you want to call it. Guys, please stay safe. Um, hope, hope your family's blessed. Hope your family's safe. Hope everyone's healthy. Peace.